Hi guys, Judy here. I hope you're having a great day. God bless everybody today. It's Thursday, October 26th, and um, I, I have some encouragement for you. I've, um, I just want to share, you know, in my faith walk, and and um, and, I, and I think it's going to bless you. I've been blessed by so many people on YouTube, and. Uh, sharing their faith, sharing their abiding love of their groom and of the soon coming rapture. And, and, um, and the, that's the Lord. That's the Lord. That's what he's done in us. I would have never been rapture centric had the Lord not done this. In 2013, he fell on my son. I think a lot of you know my story. Um, and it's really God's story to the groom. You know, he calls certain ones for his purpose and he called my son. He fell on him and made him a prophet. And my son for a period of three to four months was very strongly prophesying, giving us the order of events and just giving us many things that were to come. Um, and that we were indeed in the season of the rapture. And, um, he, he caused me to quit my job, give away my car, give away almost everything, my bank account, everything. And it was a beautiful season. It was 2013. I was full of faith. I'm full of faith now, um, but it's it's been one of those things where I've had to exercise a bit and flex my muscle uh, of faith, and it's been through many tears because, as you guys know, when these dates come and go, when you wake up and you're still here, it's excruciatingly painful to still be here when the Lord of the universe himself has descended upon either your life, in my case it was my son, and made him a completely different person and fell on him and told him what was to come. It changed my life forever. So. I put it all back on the Lord. I think and I've made a lot of videos and um, you guys know that I've, I blame him because it was his doing. So when I encounter my rapture centric condition, I, I don't feel at all responsible for it. It, it was something that the Lord did. So I tell him, you know, I, I, I tell him, Lord, you did this to me. So, you know, my condition is your fault <laughs> because sometimes being rapture centric is, is wonderful but sometimes it's very hard. And you guys know, I call it the bipolar ride of the bride. You're up and you're down. You're convinced he's coming and then you're just like, he's never going to get here. And it's, you know, and you know he's coming. So um, I'm making this video because I went into a very deep time. I've had some time off because of the fires. And this has been an, an amazing gift from the Lord, uh, honestly, to be able to just you know, homeschool my son and then just spend every extra moment I have outside of that time and being a mom to just really sit with the Lord and do exactly what as he's commanded me to do, you know, and with no other distractions. It's been a real gift. Um, and one of the things he called me to do was, was particularly pray with a brother and a sister over the phone and just have some very special prayer times. And these prayer times um, strengthened me and got me even more rapture centric, you know, but they brought with it a great depression because I keep waking up here and I cried out to the Lord and I said, God, I can't, I, I just, I, I'm going to do this because I love you, but this is so incredibly hard. I need a sign. I need a sign, an unbelievable, unmistakable sign from you that I'm continue that I continue to live this way continue to live my life in this state of limbo um both in my profession and both as a parent and as just it's just you know if you're going to be a couple years or something god I I mean it's not fair you know for me to sort of not do things that would be good for my son's future, even if he's only here another year, you know, I, I need to know, you know, and I just go on and on. I'm like, Lord, you know, what, what, what is going on? I just, oh, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's this deep walk with the Lord. It, this rapture centric lifestyle, it brings you to your knees. It brings you to this, this depth of pain slash joy slash desperation for God to act, you know, and so you'll know what I'm talking about if, if you're rapture centric and God has made you that way. And, um, so I just decided I'm just not going to eat. That's just how it's got to be. I just, I'm not going to be able to eat until I know 
Father, am I going back to work? You know, is this really the time? Is this really it? Please don't make a fool of me. I, I was a fool. I've been a fool for four years. I've, and I'll continue to be your fool if that's what you desire. But, you know, if you, I don't ever believe in being a fool for being a fool's sake. Okay. And then blaming God for being stupid. I don't, I don't agree with that. I have a, you know, I have a good head on my shoulders. I'm just speaking for myself. So I'm not going to do foolish stuff unless it's the Lord and then I'll do it. Okay. If it's the Lord, I'll do it. But I, Normally, I'm not going to play the part of a fool, and I think most of you can agree that that's just foolishness, and then when people try to blame God for their foolishness, it just gives him a bad name, it makes you look bad, the whole thing's a big mess. Okay, so we don't, we don't want to do that. We, you know, I've, I've, I've known the Lord too long to, you know, and that's okay if you do make mistakes like that, and you do foolish things. The Lord will love you, he'll forgive your work too, but I've known him for over 20 years, and so we're kind of beyond... I would hope, you know, walking in more maturity. And so I'm like, God, this is, unless you're calling me to continue to be a fool, then I just can't keep doing this. I can't do it. I can't do it. I've got to make a commitment to my work. I've got to make a commitment to, you know, raising my son. I've got, you know, and I am raising him. I'm raising him really well, but it's like, you know, certain things that he wouldn't, he won't get if I continue to live like this, you know, and you guys know as your kids get older, they're going to start getting their driver's permit. You got to get them a car, you know, as long as we're here, we have to keep functioning. Okay. And just things like that, that weigh on me, you know, and I'm like, God, what is it? What is it? What is it? And I'm sharing my walk with you because God wants me to be transparent. He wants you to see what a warrior bride looks like. Okay, a warrior bride is a child of the king. And as children, we cry, we weep, we're confused, you know, we're powerful. We're to be envied by a lost world, but we're also, what makes us powerful is our vulnerability. When we're weak, he's our strength. And he causes your weakness to be your strength. You know, he causes you to be weak so you could be strong in him. And so I'm not embarrassed or ashamed to let you know exactly the stuff I go through. Okay, sometimes you've heard me on my videos. I'm on a mountaintop. Nothing can convince me otherwise. But this is a bipolar ride, this rapture-centric walk. And it's no joke. And God told me it was. I said, I told him, you're the bipolar king of kings. I've never seen anyone so up and down till you fell on my son and he'll cry and weep and then he'll be angry he'll weep at the judgment then he'll be angry and ready to execute it and then he'll cry again and then he'll be sad and then he'll be happy and then he'll you know it's just it's up and down so I, I share in those emotions with him and I liken it to um, when he was you know he asked them in the garden can you just before he was going to the cross could anyone just stay up with me for one hour and perhaps he could have shared those emotions that would have made that time a little easier, you know. And so I told God, I'll sit with you in the garden. Because he told me that judging the world was harder than the cross. You know, it's gonna, it's harder than the cross. This, this is What he did on the cross was very hard. He even said it was so hard, he said, if it's possible, can we not do this? But it wasn't possible. And he went through with it. And, and just like he succumbed to the cross, he will succumb to the judgment slash rapture because the judgment is rapture okay so it's the same event same time it's um as, as, as soon as the rapture occurs judgment begins is what i mean and the rapture is the glorious you know it's not the same event as judgment obviously it's the I, so i don't want to be misquoted it's it's the wedding supper of the lamb it's a three-day feast in heaven we're consummating with our creator but my my original point of saying this was i was pouring out my heart i said i'm not going to eat I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just going to lay here. I have time to do this. You've given me some time off. I need to hear from you. And he brought me to scripture. He brought me to the story of Mary. And, you know, would she believe that, you know, she believed. And it, she was counted uh, as a great woman of faith to believe that she was going to be holding the Son of God in her belly, you know. And then he brought me to the story of the cross where after he died, he appeared again to Mary Magdalene, the other Mary. 
And he, and she believed and she went to tell the others and they didn't believe when she said, I saw him, he's alive. And Jesus, when he showed up there and they didn't believe her story, he rebuked them. He rebuked them for not believing, you know, but then he carried on and, and, and loved on them and, and was, was, was kind, but you know, he, he rebuked them. He corrected them. You should, you need to believe, you know, and Mary believed when the angel came to her and it was credit to her as righteousness, she believed. And this is what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to believe. And even if you were still here past the dates that he gave you or past an amazing experience that he's giving you, some of you are having experiences in your body with pregnancy. Some of you are having experiences with, I don't know, on a personal level, you name it. I know you guys, because he's flirting with the bride. And so you're having your own personal flirts, your own personal stories of why you know he's coming, the things that you and him are doing because you're intimate, because you're friends. I have my story. I've shared it with you. He fell on my son, you know, and I will never forget that story. It was, yeah, four years ago, but still, I mean, it was to grab my attention and to cause, cause me to live like he's coming every day. And that's what I've been doing, you know, and I will continue to do it. But that's what he told me today. And I just want to encourage you with that, you guys. He wants me to believe what he is showing me about his appearing. He wants me to believe it. Whether or not it comes true the day that I he shows me the next date set or the next round of flirts, that's besides the point. It's I'm justified by my faith and my belief, and it, he's causing me to believe that. Does that mean he's a liar? Does that mean he's playing games and messing with me? Well, it sure feels like it in this realm and in the natural, but in the spirit, it's not what he's doing. In fact, when I told him that and kind of accused him of that, he told me, no, you'll understand why I did it this way. You have great faith. Thank you for your faith. And would you continue to do this? And I was like, yeah, because if I love you, groom, I'll do what you say, even if it hurts, even if it kills me, you know, or you know what I'm saying? Some of us feel like we're dying. Um, and that's okay. Cause we are, <laughs> we're becoming alive in Christ and we're shedding more and more skin and it's hard and it hurts, but we're powerful. Just because I'm sitting here crying and it sounds like I'm weak, I I know that my strength is him. So don't be mistaken. I'm not depressed or in the dumps, okay? But but I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged because he spoke to me. And I want to share that encouragement, okay? And in my weakness, he became strong. And he just shared with me a couple of those stories from the Bible. He had me, and it was like I read them for the first time. It was bizarre. I've read those stories a gazillion times. Been to Bible college, okay? <laughs> I just have studied my Bible. I love the Bible. so I, I. But I've read those stories, and it was like my first time reading them again. I was just enamored with the story of the cross and then the story of, of Mary. And when she was told she was going to you know, carry the son of God. And, and I, I read the story of Elizabeth and he just brought me to those stories and talked to me about faith, faith, how that pleases him. Okay. And, um, I just want to encourage you guys that God loves you. Um, continue to believe everything he's causing you to believe. Do not doubt. I will not doubt what the recent thing he's shown me about going home this Sunday and before Monday, the 30th. But if I wake up here I will have new energy and new strength and new courage because he will be speaking to me like he does all the time when a date set goes. And I thought, I can't possibly handle another one, God. This time I told him I can't. And he just told me, only believe. You know, he's not messing with you guys. He's not lying. He's not playing games. But I know it looks like that in this realm. It, it looks like it. But we'll understand why he had to do it this way, okay? God loves you. He's real. He's so kind to me today. That's why I had to make this video. I've got to go now. But I just, he's so kind, you guys. He loves us so much that he gave me these Bible stories and he spoke to me something so deep. Only believe. Your faith is pleasing me. Just keep believing. And and if you wake up here, you'll deal with it then. But until then, believe you're not going to be here. And I'm, he's causing me to do certain drastic things that are going to have implications if I am here. But he's like, trust me with the outcome. Trust me with the outcome. Do you trust me? Yeah, I do. All right, so if you think you're not going to be here, trust me with the outcome. I love you guys, and I just want to encourage you with that same word. Believe what he's causing you to believe. Trust him with the outcome. Don't count the cost. Only count the cost of pleasing him. Don't forget about what it's going to cost you, because it's going to cost me a lot if this next date doesn't come. It will. It costs me, it costs me a lot in different areas. 
the display, the faith that he causes me to do, it's humiliating. It does a lot of different things, but that's okay because he's pleased and that's all that matters. So believe he's coming now. I love you guys. Bye.